G'day guys, in today's video I'm doing a few video game benchmarks on the HP Victus G3 PQ. This particular one is running a Ryzen 5 5600H, a RX 6500M 4GB model, and it's got 16GB of RAM, 500GB hard drive. Now I put it through the paces, I did have to capture the footage using my camera right here, as the 5600M doesn't support any H.264, H.265 video encoding. So from there, I wasn't able to use the AMD screen desktop capture software. So yeah, the footage is okay, but you'll get the idea of it. So let's check it out. So I'm in the first video here, I've got Counter-Strike Global Offensive. And as we're going through, most of the settings are left on the default high. And as I mentioned about Reaver Tuner, I've got the AMD performance overlay going right now. And as we can see, it's pulling a decent amount of FPS if you look at the top left hand corner. And if you look at the top right hand corner, you can see the current wattage of the processor or the GPU, which is only running at around 31 or roughly 30 watts up to 40 watts. So overall, the performance of it is not too bad. The CPU itself is running fairly low, 15 watts, which is similar to a U processor or 5000U processor, which is normally only about a 15 to 25 watt processor. Smoke does affect it, then does give it a fairly major FPS drop soon. But as you can see, if we're using, if you look at the CPU and GPU combined wattage, we're only running about 50 watts in uh, in combo. So what that means as well is a relatively quiet fan noise. Well, while running the benchmarks, it was pretty much fairly unnoticeable in a reasonably quiet room. So it does make a little weird pitch of the fan every now and then. But gameplay for this, for CSGO at 1080 or 1080 resolution at high graphics on this 60 hertz panel that this screen does have, it'd be running quite fine playing CSGO. And next up here, we've got Resident Evil 2, which is also running at 1080 resolution, which is native res. As we can see here, it's we do also have the super resolution enabled, and various settings are mostly set on high. Being an older, slower-paced third-person third game, I do believe this machine is quite capable of running Resident Evil 2 or Resident Evil 3 quite fine. As we can see, we're using about 30 watts of power in the top right-hand corner. CPU utilization is around about 50-40% and FPS we're pulling roughly around about 100 FPS. So if you want to play the Resident Evil series you're probably going to go alright. I don't have Village so I wasn't able to install and try that one which hopefully I'll get that down the line. But as we can see it's playing it quite smoothly, quite fine. So here I loaded up Battlefield 5. I've got V-Sync disabled, running at still 1080 resolution, and most settings set to medium. And with that, it seemed to run pretty smoothly, mainly floating around about 60 FPS the vast majority of the time, dropping as low as about 40 FPS, as high as about 65 FPS. Now on a 60 Hertz panel, that's perfectly fine. If you had this on 120 or 120 or 100 or higher panel, you'd probably be a bit disappointed with the FPS that this machine's pulling. As we have a look at the wattage, it is only pulling about 24, or 23, 24, 25 watts on the GPU, which is very low, considering I'm used to 30, 60s pulling anywhere from about 65 watts up to about 110 watts. So not bad performance considering the wattage. I can definitely understand how the Steam Deck now, using the RDNA 2 chip, is performing as well as it does. Next up I fired up Apex Legend, with most things set on high, 1080 resolution, and to begin with I just loaded up the training map and done a quick run around, and then I loaded up 3 vs 3, as it would seem to be a bit of a queue to get into the main event. But as we can see, FPS, fairly solid, fairly stable. 
between 60, 70, even as high as 80 FPS, considering it's only pulling 33 watts and the CPU looks to be only running at about five watts. So running pretty darn well considering. I'm not sure how truthful that CPU power is, as that is ridiculously low. But anyway, let's continue. And here we have the three verse three footage and seem to be hanging a bit above 50 FPS, which isn't too bad considering. Considering this is a fast paced action game, usually a lot of twists, a lot of jumps, a lot of speed. So I'd say it's pretty tolerable, pretty playable. And here I've got Dying Light 2 running at native resolution, FSR set to performance, and most of the options, or most of the options set to high. Now I did encounter quite a bit of issues with this. I found that the overall image quality would be noticeably poorer with FSR disabled, especially looking around the town. So near the end of this clip, I do get to on top of a rooftop and look around, and to me it just looks too sharpened. It doesn't look pretty at all. Right now it is relative, running relatively smoothly. Granted, I do believe this game is being RAM restricted as it's using about 11 point, or using 11.7 gig in a 16 gig system. So with the FSR, FSR enabled, it does seem to maintain FPS just fine. But when I disable FSR, that's where I seem to be having an extremely bad FPS drop. So right now, to me, that looks very poor, very bright, very hazy. Now, if I turn the upscaler off and leave most settings either on high or, or on medium and basically go to the same location, the FPS drop is terrible. Right there, dropping down to 6 FPS, go to make the jump over here, and we're completely stopped. That's not playable. In... Without the FSR enabled, this game virtually becomes unplayable. But I do believe it's more of a RAM bottleneck, more so than a limitation on the processor or the GPU. As the vast majority of the times, it seems to be good, but those FPS spikes are very, yeah, make it very not playable. Being there's only 4 gig RAM free for the CPU, or for the rest of the system, when running this game, I do believe if this was upgraded to 32 gig of RAM, this game would be considerably more player and that should probably remove the FPS drops. So overall, with F FSR enabled, it is playable. Without it, not so much, unless you upgrade the RAM. And lastly in this video, I've got GTA 5, which runs extremely well. Everything's set to high, or very high. Native resolution, and essentially the performance on this perfectly fine, exactly what you'd expect from GTA 5. One thing I did note was GTA 5 did seem to have a relatively high CPU power draw compared to the other games, where right now you can see it's sitting around about 20 watts, where most of the other games were, were around that or lower. So I do say that GTA 5 is a more CPU demanding game than the other ones getting played, possibly excluding Counter-Strike. But this would definitely be playable on a 60 hertz panel like this, that's currently in this machine at 1080 resolution, full high graphics, it's going to perform just perfectly fine. So overall my thoughts on the HP Victus with the 5600H and the 6500M is even though it seems to be very underpowered compared to something like a 3060, I do like the overall balance of the system. If you had this in a small ultralight machine with a 14 inch touch panel and it came in at a decent price so sub probably thousand dollars australian sub seven seven fifty us dollars you'd actually probably get a fairly well balanced machine between battery life gaming performance thermals fan noise so overall it is surprising me and it does give me hope for the rest of the rdna2 chips that are being released or have been released on the mobile platforms. Anyway, I'm gonna let the GTA 5 benchmark continue and I'll catch you guys later. Bye.